and you, uh, you don't join those who steal and those who do evil and yet those people there they persecute you it says princes have persecuted me without a cause but my heart standeth in awe of thy word we're looking at john chapter 15 john chapter 15 verse 23 verse 24 verse 25 john chapter 15 verse 23 he that hateth me hateth my father also can you imagine anybody hating the lord jesus christ he healed the sick he delivered the oppressed he multiplied their food he turned water into wine he raised the dead he forgave the sinners he brought them into the kingdom and he showed them the way of life and yet can you imagine anybody hating our christ he that hated me hated my father also if i had not done among them the works which none all the man did they had, had no sin they had, they had not had sin but now have they both seen they've seen all those great mighty signs and wonders and have hated both me and my father but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law they hated me tell me the rest without a cause they hated me without a cause and that's what they did to daniel and that's what they do to our deliverer to the lord jesus christ our savior in their jealousy and hatred they sought to find fault in daniel's life or daniel's administration that there was no error or fault found in that faithful man they could not find anything he did that he should not have done no sin of commission and there was they couldn't find anything that he did not do that he should have done there was no sin of omission how could anybody so hate such a man as daniel and want to get rid of him at all costs they themselves confessed that there was nothing to condemn him for yet they conspired to cast him alive into a den of lions always remember this very important now pay attention this is very important this is very important it is not everyone that the world accuses of sin or crime that is guilty before god and so don't sing the songs they sing and don't chorus the chorus and the, the shouts that they make and don't carry the placards that they carry and don't go about with the slogans that the people of the world carry about when they accuse a daniel of doing wrong daniel may not be guilty before god when they accuse a joseph before god joseph is not guilty before god when david is accused and then there's somebody that is running after him, wanting to destroy him. After all, David may not be guilty of anything. And Mordecai, when Haman goes around wanting to hang him, you'll think Mordecai was a criminal because of what Haman was planning and plotting. But Haman was, was wrong and Mordecai was not guilty. When people go about wanting to crucify and kill and destroy Jeremiah, the people said, this man is worthy to die. And yet Jeremiah was just doing the will of God. And when Herod wanted to take Peter, Put him in the prison and the following day expecting he's going to take that peter and he's going to destroy him you'll think that peter had done something wrong i'm reminding you that you know the people that the world goes against they may not have done anything wrong at all they persecute us without a cause they run against us without a cause and they speak against us without a cause and they spoke against uh, against daniel against david against joseph and against jeremiah against Mordecai, against paul against peter without a cause Pe paul was not guilty but the multitude said away was such a fellow from the earth for it is not fit that he should live and so we need to understand that we should stand by a fellow brother a fellow believer stand by joseph and stand by jeremiah and stand by david and stand by daniel and stand by peter stand by paul they don't say the same thing the worldly people are saying when in the district in your locality in your community when the unbelievers they are shouting something against the believer 
Don't conclude that well that believer must have backslidden. Look at what the community is saying. They might be saying what they are saying out of jealousy, out of envy, out of hatred. They might just be persecutors. Beware of the envy of the people. It can lead to bitterness, hatred, sin, death, and even damnation in hell. But the Lord Jesus Christ, even though he was hated, he did not hit them back. He just prayed for them, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. We're looking at this study today, and uh, the study, you, you've seen it on your outline. Uh, the study itself is the preservation of the righteous. The Lord will preserve you. And the Lord will preserve his church. And the Lord will preserve all the good things he has given us in the church in Jesus' name. Daniel was preserved. We're going to be preserved. We're looking at it. We're studying this today on the three subtitles. Number one, the decree and the prosecution of the righteous. The decree and the prosecution of the righteous. Number two, the deliverance and the protection of the righteous. The Lord will protect you. And the Lord will deliver you. If you are living the righteous life and you are walking according to the way of the Lord, standing upon this rock of ages and then whatever temptation trial you say, I've already committed my life to the Lord and I'm not going to look back. You'll be preserved in Jesus' name. And then point number three, the destiny and the perdition of reprobates. The destiny and the perdition of Reprobate. So we come to point number one, the decree and the prosecution of the righteous. We're looking at Daniel chapter, chapter 6, verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees. How many times? Three times a day. And what did he do? He prayed and he gave thanks before his God as he did a full time. Look up here, brothers and sisters. You know, sometimes when you study the Bible, if you don't uh, take note of some little, little things, you will not understand the, what you're reading. For example, here it says, Daniel knew the writing was signed. And then he went to pray. As he did a full time. And then you are wondering, what's he praying about? Why is the prayer so important? Why couldn't he suspend that prayer just a week, just a month? And then later, he'll continue to pray. And I want to just remind you the kind of prayer he was praying. Now, who was the king at this time? What's his name? Darius. And Darius just uh, came as the king. I want you to look at chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions. You know what I read that to you? What you read in chapter 7 actually was his prophecy. But that had already been given before Belshazzar was dead. And so, what we're reading now is actually after what happened in chapter 7. I want you to look at chapter 8, verse 1. In the third year of the reign of the king Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel. Again, what you read in chapter 8 actually had been given to Daniel before chapter 6. What Daniel did is that all the historical parts he packed into chapters 1 to 6. And then the prophetical part, he patched into chapters 7 to 12. Now look at chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 1. In the first year of Darius, son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Now the first year of Darius. You compare that with chapter 6. Actually, the prayer you find in chapter 9, that prayer was prayed in chapter 6. The first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, in verse 2. And in the first year 
of his reign. I Daniel understood by the books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish seventy years and the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. That's the prayer I was praying. It was the first year of the reign of Darius that he prayed that prayer. And it was that prayer that the people didn't want him to pray, that Satan didn't want him to pray. I wanted to keep the children of Israel in captivity because the Lord had said, yes, I'll do this for the children of Israel, but they must ask me. They must pray. And Daniel set his mind and his face that he will pray. Before I go on, do you know then why Daniel knew? Even though Daniel knew that he'll be thrown to the lion's den, yet he still prayed that prayer. Why? The reason is this, the prayer was greater than the person. Daniel said, this prayer is greater than me, greater than my life. And none of these things move me. Neither count I my life, my person, my personality, my promotion, anything unto me. Because the prayer to deliver the children of Israel as a whole nation from captivity, that prayer is greater than the person. Number two, the promise was greater than the persecution. Now they, they said, well, throw him each last day if he prayed that prayer. But God had promised, if somebody will take hold of the hand of the Lord and pray unto me, I will hear, I will deliver the children of Israel out of the land of the, captive, of the captives. And that promise of God was greater than the persecution. That's why he prayed. Number three, the prophecy was greater than the peril. The prophecy is that they will spend 70 years. When they spend those 70 years, after the 70 years, I will deliver the children of Israel. That prophecy Daniel counted was greater than the peril. You need to always make that comparison in your mind. If you don't make comparison in your mind, you will not be able to do the things you ought to do. You want to pray. And then there's somebody that is saying, don't pray. You cannot pray in this house. This is not a Christian house. This is a house dedicated to another religion. Then you ask yourself, the prayer I am praying to get to heaven. The prayer I am praying to remain in righteousness and holiness. The prayer I am praying that I will not backslide. I'll go from strength to strength. What kind of prayer is that? That prayer is greater than this person. That prayer is greater than my personal life. Not only that, the promise the Lord has given me is greater than all the persecution I may experience. And then the prophecy that the Lord is coming. And because the Lord is coming and he wants me to be ready. And he says, watch and pray that you will be ready when the Lord will come. That prophecy is greater than any peril that I can go through. That's why we pray. That's why we take our stand. That's why Daniel prayed, even though he knew the cost of that prayer. We're looking at chapter 6 now, verse 11. Daniel chapter 6, verse 11. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and make, making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed the decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or man within thirty days except of this save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, the thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. They then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. 
and that was the decree and that was the prosecution now they wanted to prosecute him look at uh, psalm 94 verses 20 and 21 psalm 94 we're looking at verse 20, verse 21. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which framed mischief by a law? The framed mischief, destruction, evil, and they framed it by a law. They made a decree for that. They gathered themselves together against the soul of the righteous. They gather themselves together against the soul of Daniel. And it says to condemn the innocent blood. That's what they wanted to do. They're trying that today. They will not succeed in Jesus' name. Why do they do that? Why do they persecute the righteous? What do they go after? The people that love the Lord, the people that serve the Lord, the people who are born again. The people who have been cleansed and washed in the blood of the Lamb. The people who are walking the highway of holiness and righteousness and obedience. Let's look at Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 29. Galatians 4, verse 29. It says, But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit even so it is now on the one side all those presidents and princes and counselors and governors and all those uh, people that came against daniel they were born after the flesh and the works of the flesh they did hatred is of the flesh jealousy envy that's of the flesh Plotting to destroy another person's life, that's of the flesh. Plotting and planning to destroy another person's progress in the Lord, that's of the flesh. And it says the works of the flesh are manifest. And they that do those works, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And those are the people born of the flesh, persecuting the people that are born of the spirit. Daniel was born of the spirit. A righteous man, a child of God, no fault, no sin, no evil, no error in his life. They that are born after the flesh, they persecute them that are born after the spirit. In John chapter 15, the Lord Jesus Christ himself has reminded us and has instructed us that when those persecutions come, we should not be surprised. Because that's exactly what the people of the world, that's what they try to do. John chapter 15 verse 18. If the world hates you, ye you know that it hated me before it hated you. Believers don't hate anyone. In particular, believers don't hate fellow believers. If there's hatred in your heart against any child of God, any believer, any disciple of Christ, that's a very clear evidence of the world. It's the world, it's the people that follow after Satan that hates the people of God. If there's any hatred in your heart, any bitterness in your heart, any animosity in you, and any plan and any plot to do evil against any child of God, that's a mark that you are not born again. Because it's the people of the world that hate those who are children of God. That's what Jesus said. That's how you can check up. Am I born again? Am I a child of God? Am I a follower of Christ? Do I have grace in my heart? Am I on my way to heaven? The evidence on your way to heaven is that there's no hatred in your heart. There's love, love for Daniel. And love for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Love for every child of God. No envy, no jealousy, and no hatred, and no plan, and no plot to do evil against any Daniel. In verse 19, if he were of the world, the world would love his own. And But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. 
Verse 20, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, what will they do? They will persecute you. If they, if they have persecuted me, who are those people? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, those who are not born again, those who are born of the flesh. And those who have hatred and jealousy and envy in their hearts against the Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sins, they will also keep yours. We're looking at Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. We're looking at verse 24, verse 25. The disciple is not above his master. Not the servant above his Lord. It is enough that the disciple be, that he be as his master, and the servant as his lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Look at verse 22. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Read out the rest. Let me hear you. But he that endure it to the age, enduring in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of all the trouble, in the midst of all the envy and the jealousy and the hatred. You know, there are some people, they cannot stand the hatred of the people of the world. They cannot stand the hatred of backsliders. They cannot stand the hatred of the people that do not know the Lord. But if you're going to get to heaven, you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ like Daniel. He believed in the Lord his God. We need to endure to the end. I need to ask the Lord for grace and always remembering that the prayer you are praying, Oh Lord, hold me. Oh Lord, keep me. Keep me faithful to the very end. Keep me faithful so I can get to heaven at last. That prayer is greater than the person. And the promise the Lord has given you, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Therefore, be not dismayed and fear not. I will hold you to the very end. That promise is greater than the persecution. And then that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming again. The prophecy that the Lord has given us. And we need to get ready for his coming. That prophecy of the second coming of the Lord. And that we will be partakers of those who are going to go with the Lord. When the saints go marching in the prophecy that they, you and I, that will be among them. That when the dead in Christ shall rise. And then we that are alive will be cut off. And then to be with the Lord. That prophecy is greater than any peril. Therefore your eyes are always on the prayer. On the promise. And on the prophecy. And you say, I don't care what happens in the world. I'm going to keep on holding on to the end you hold on to the end in jesus name and so you find that's why daniel in you he that endured to the end the same shall be saved daniel at this time was just about as 87 years of age going to night him and he had been following after the lord and now this challenge came very near to the end of his life and he said i know the trick of the devil I know the plan of the enemy. I've been following the Lord all through these years and now at the tail end of my life. He wants to derail me, discourage me, and then make me draw back. I will not draw back. I said I will not draw back. That's why he endured. And he said, I don't care about the den of liars. I'm going to stand faithful. He will be faithful. You will be faithful in Jesus' name. Daniel did not pray because of the decree. He had always been praying. He had always been committed to the devotion life of prayer. He was brought to Babylon at the age of about 17. He lived in Babylon through the 70-year period of the Babylonian Empire. That makes him about 87 years of age. At the time that Darius took the kingdom, at the age of 